Hello and welcome to another episode of Advanced React WordPress Theme Development. In previous video, we learned about how to display the menus onto the front end, which we did. And in this video, we want to talk about the revalidate feature of Next.js Get Static Props. <music> Okay, so what happens is that if you go ahead and build this, let's say I'll do npm run build and npm run start. This is going to run the build for you and create all of the HTML pages. However, what happens is that these are going to be just static. Okay, uh, which means if you make any changes from the back end, those changes will not be reflected. So, so take a look at this. If I go to refresh, and now you've got all of this, and if you go to the next, and you go to static chunks, you've got pages, you've got index.js, etc. Now, if I go ahead and make any changes in the menus, so let's say that I go to header menu, Okay, and then I go ahead and make changes to about, make it abouts, see what happens. If I refresh, you can see it doesn't change. Now why is that? Is because we are generating the static pages because we are using the function which is get static props. It's going to generate the static pages. So what this does is when you run the build, it's going to get all of the data at that time. So it's going to run this query. It's going to get that data, generate the static page, HTML pages, so it's ready for the user. And that's it. It will not go ahead and fetch the fresh data. So how do we solve that? So for that, I really love, I really love what Next.js has done. In, in fact, this is where Next.js shines over Gatsby because with Gatsby, uh, you can definitely generate static pages, but then every time you want to get fresh data, then you will have to uh, go ahead and uh, run the build again. Uh, if you don't want that, then you will have to do a dynamic query, which means you have to make a client side request to get the data again. Right? So how do we solve this? Well, we have something called incremental static regeneration. And this feature was released in Next.js 9.5. And it's really amazing. Let's find out what it is. So let's say you update the page, what happens? So Next.js would have already got all of the data from the backend. It would have performed, it would have performed all the query, got all of the data, generated the page uh, at the build time, which means it would have had the old version of the page. So once you update the page, let's see what happens. If the user request comes in, it's going to go ahead and trigger a regeneration of the page. Okay? And th during this regeneration process, Next.js is going to create a new version of the page with the updated data in the background. However, this first user on the first request is going to get the old data. So it's going to get the old static page and not the new version. After this request, any other request that comes in, for example, let's say user2 makes a request, then at that time, the user2 will get the updated static page. So this is the basic concept of incremental static regeneration, which means that a user request comes in, is going to trigger a page to be regenerated in the background, which will be the updated version of the page. So let's say a user request comes in, it's going to go ahead and trigger uh, regeneration. It would create the page in the background with the new version, the updated data. And then on the, fir the first user gets the old static page. However, the second user will get the updated static page. Okay, so this is the basic concept. Now let's move further. Now, do I want to regenerate the page on every request? Well, not really. So how do we tackle that? So how do I control the number of regeneration that happens? So well, we in next years, we have something called revalidate, which is the timeout. So what this does is basically, it gives us an ability to add an interval. 
and if we specify an interval let's say 60 seconds is going to regenerate the new version of the page in the background only on the first request during that interval and this timeout is calculated with reference to the time in seconds from the previous request okay so whenever that previous request would have came from that time within 60 seconds if any new request comes in is going to do the regeneration of the page only once so you do need to specify the timeout to go ahead and get this feature you can't just uh, not have this timeout okay so timeout needs to be specified to get the benefit of the incremental static regeneration of Next.js. Okay, so basic thumb rule, the regeneration of the page is only going to happen on the first request during that interval. The interval could be 60 seconds, it could be 30 seconds, it could be anything. But it's only going to happen once, which means only the first request, only the first user will be affected which will have the old version of the page. Rest all the users during that 60 seconds will always have the updated page. Okay, so let's say that we set a timeout of 30 seconds as inside the revalidate key, we set the value as 30 seconds. So if we check from the previous request on the after the first 10 seconds, if the first request comes in, the regeneration is going to happen. Next year is going to create uh, an updated or a new version of the page in the background and the first user will get the old static page and any user that comes after that let's say on the 20th second user 2 comes in he will get the new version on 25th second if the user comes in he will get the new version now bear in mind that uh, after the 10 second when the regeneration has already happened on the 15 second if you go ahead and make an update to the page uh, the the user that comes on the 20th second and on the 25th second is not going to get the updated page because remember we're only going to regenerate the page once during this entire span of 30 seconds which means will the other users get the updated page so any request that comes after the 30 seconds again the same rule will apply on the first request is going to regenerate the page and any subsequent request during that 30 seconds will have the new version of the page all right so i've tried to make this concept really easy and simple for you to understand because so i've put a chart for you so it's easy for you to understand okay so what's the benefit what's the benefit of the static side generation okay so first is static is consistently and predictably fast the pre-rendered HTML file can be cached and served by global CDN. Static is always online. So which means that even if your backend or data source goes down, your existing pre-rendered page will still be available, which is freaking amazing. You know, my site never goes down, just like Gatsby. Then static, static minimizes backend load. With static generation, the database, the database or API wouldn't need to be hit on each and every request. So we just figured out that we can set a validation time uh, timeout and during that 60 seconds the regeneration would only happen once which means the database or the API would only be called once during that entire period of 60 seconds uh, because um, no matter how many requests comes in during that 60 seconds or 30 seconds it's not going to call the backend API uh, a number of times it only happens once okay so page rendering code wouldn't have to run on each and every request which is really amazing let's try this out I'm going to use revalidate and where do we use it we use it here where we are returning props so I'm just going to put a comma over here and put the revalidate and this for one second so let's try this what I'm going to do is I will do the same thing again which is npm run build and npm run start npm run start starts the server in the production mode okay so you can see you've got on port 3000 now if you go and refresh congratulations did you see that about it, it just changed which is great to me and now if i go and change the menu again i put another s notice what happens if i refresh it's not going to update let's see see it didn't update why did it not update the updated HTML page would only be available in the subsequent request. Okay, 
So now if I refresh it again, you can see it changed, right? So now if you take a look at the reactions dot dash demo now dot sh, here is where the next yes is explained how this thing is working. So you can see this page is statically generated with Next.js, fetching data from GitHub, and it's deployed to Vercel Edge Network CDN. Okay, um, so this page is being regenerated using incremental static regeneration, which is which is released in Next.js 9.5. Here's how it works. So you can see it talks about that Next.js page can define the timeout for this page, and it's set to one second. So even in our case, if you take a look, we are setting it to one second. So what does that mean? When the new request comes in, it's the statically generated page is served, which means it's going to serve the page from the Next.js folder, the whatever the statically generate, generated page is uh, there. Okay, which is this one, index.js. And then later on, another request comes in uh, after the de defined time is exceeded, which means one, after one second is exceeded, the statically generated page is served which means on the first request, like explained to you earlier, on the first request, the statically generated page will be served. Okay. And then next year generates a new version of the page in the background and update the static page for future request, right? So this page is going to be updated for the future request, right? When another request comes in after the regeneration is done, then the updated static page is served. This is why you notice that on the first request, uh, the data wasn't available, but on the subsequent request, it is. So this allows incremental static generation on the per page basis without rebuilding the whole application. And it's always be fast because users will get a static response. You understand now how it is working. And you can see it's all happening in the get static props that we've created, which is this one. And it fetches data during the static side generation and revalidates this and revalidate specifies the timeout. Okay. Awesome. Great. Okay. To be honest, if you ask me, none of your users would be affected anyways. Why? Because if you change something, wouldn't you want to go ahead and check uh, that it's working properly on the front end by refreshing the page? So if you are the one who are refreshing the page, then that's your first request. So which means everybody else after you is going to get the fresh data which is pretty cool to me because I'm still taking advantage of the static side generation of the next JS and I'm also getting the fresh data. This is freaking amazing. I mean, I love it. Okay. Awesome. And look how fast is it? It is right. It's this is super fast. Cool. So that's the revalidate for you. And in the next video, we are going to go ahead and create the static pages dynamically for all of these. So currently these pages aren't created, but we will do that in the next video. So I hope you did like the video. If you did, please give a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. And please start my repository to support my work. And do follow me on GitHub. My GitHub handle is Imran Sayyad, And I'm going to see you in the next video. Thank you very much. Bye bye.